And one um, useful model uh, to explain why we do difference is this notion of a meme. Uh, Richard Dawkins, in his book, The Selfish Gene, uh, said, well, it's possible to think about evolution not as the animals or the, uh, the larger, the macro entities being the players, but if you think in a game theoretic approach, the real players are the genes. And the genes are trying to reproduce themselves, and we're simply carriers for genes. So all, all our wonderful story, like, I don't know, what, what's the, one of the most human things? Falling in love. Well, falling in love, there's all sorts of oxytocin and different hormones and chemistry and pheromones. And this is, there's a whole science about that, and I've, I've been reading about it, it's quite fascinating. You know, it's just, you, it, it's a lot less romantic than you think, let me put it like that. I'll, I'll give you the bottom line. Um, and one story is that, well, this is not really people doing anything, it's genes creating the carrier mechanisms to be able to spread and grow. He called that the selfish gene. But he also said, we have to get out of this embodiment. So genes are not only biological organisms. We can think of memes as uh, ideas or disembodied information pieces, which are also trying to reproduce themselves. So a meme could be a fashion. If you talk to people that have been in California or you talk to teenagers in the United States today, it's, it's, for me, it's very disgusting. They don't notice it, but it's called the California high rise. And what that means is they, they will speak in a sentence and they will always finish up. And they will say, you know, I was with a friend the other day and we were having dinner. And, and it's, uh, 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 and I, my kids say that and I want to strangle them. It's like, <laughs> stop, you know, the sentence ends down. When you're asking a question, the sentence ends up. But if you're making a statement, it ends down, down, okay? Go down. <laughs> it's like, yes, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this, these are things, or, or a jingle. You hear a song on TV and then you can't get it out of your mind and you keep thinking, singing it and you're like whistling and then you start seeing other people in your business teams whistling the same song and you're going all crazy and things take over. So fashions, all these things. So these are disembodied um, pieces of information that travel through imitation. And in a way, uh, now the researchers are saying that memes are the evolution of genes because they are going to the next level. Only human beings have the imitation qualities that will allow memes to spread. Not only that, but now they're talking about teams, which are techno-memes. So these are, these are things, memes that spread through technology. And what the, the theory is that all evolution up to now is really the teams are driving everything because they are going to take over. And as, I mean, as you think of the future where people will have embodied computers you know, in, our, in our direct link to our brains or drugs or different chemistry that will connect us to, to, to other things, it's possible to imagine you know, in a thousand years or so the human race being simply a carrier mechanism from go from genes to memes to teams and having simply machines. That's Terminator's world, no? Where so I like to talk about the other side, which is the selfless meme. So if, if you think now, and I, this is more, this is a metaphor, but if you think of memetic engineering, what would that be? Well, it's the opposite of biowarfare. Instead of putting a virus that's terrible and is going to kill people in a certain organism, in a certain society, what you do is you create a meme that is very constructive, and then you spread it. You put it there and you let people start imitating one another, and you hope that this meme will spread and will create uh, a new wave or a new way of thinking in the organization. So I, I generally refer to these memes as uh, pills. I like the notion of a pill because a pill has a hard shell, and it's necessary to provide business people with a hard shell, something that makes sense, that is rational, that is logical, that it seems down to earth and appropriate for business. But then I want the payload or the medicine inside to be soft, selfless, the, perhaps the exact opposite of what it looks in the outside. But that can only be released like a real pill once you've uh, passed the barrier of the saliva and other acid parts that will destroy the medicine. You want it to release only in the stomach. So some people accuse me that this is not as nice as a pill, it's really a Trojan horse. 
uh, and it's true, it's also a Trojan horse. I, I, it's, it, it's, it's really a, the old bait and switch. I'll, I'll, I'll bait people, it's like, look, you can be more effective, but the truth is, as people try to be more effective, they also become more human. Uh, I like effectiveness, but humanity in a sense of recognizing people's, our true nature and who we are and what's, what's possible for us in the world and how we relate to one another, that's for me is a higher purpose. But I still will give them a nice horse that they can use to decorate their businesses. So this is a, look at how many people see this thing moving. Can you raise your hand? Okay, about half. Now, interesting, half of the people see it moving, half no. Because depending on your perspective, you will have the optical illusion of this moving or not. And this is a very, there are lots of these Gestalt experiments, lots of magic eye things. So in a very down-to-earth way, you can show people, look, what you see is not what's out there. You don't see what's out there. And in fact, what you see depends on where you sit. So if you're sitting on the right, you, this was move. If you're sitting straight in front, this moves. My God, I mean, what does that say about the real problems you're talking about in your meetings? And here is the meme. The meme that I offer people is to say, well, you know, you, can, you have a choice. You can live your life as a knower, or you can live your life as a learner. If you take the blue pill, you go to bed, you wake up tomorrow, and the world will be exactly the same. Now you take the red pill of a learner, and I'll bring you to see how deep the rabbit hole is. Do you want to go and see what's on the other side? I said, well, but what is a learner? What's the difference? Well, I mean, I, I know. It's like, yeah, but a knower is not a person that knows. The definition of a knower is a person whose self-esteem is completely dependent on looking right, looking like they are right. That's, that's how I define a knower or a know-it-all. A learner, on the other side, is not identified with the content of thought, but with the process of thought. And this is... This is a much deeper, again, and now I'm in the business part, so I don't go into this, but it's a very deep question. Is a human being an entity or is the human being a process? And in the Eastern perspective, there's much more a process. There's, there's no thing there. It's just a flow that's carved out. It's more like a whirlpool. And I ask people, where does the whirlpool go when there's no more water in the tub? I mean, that's a Zen koan. Okay? So if you have a whirlpool in the tub and then there's no more water, where did it go? Or where does the fist go? See the fist? This is a fist. It's quite real. I could punch someone with it if you doubt it. But then, where does the fist go when I open my fingers? I mean, something's wrong. Because there's no fist here. There's a fist here. There's no fist. And there's a fist. What happens to the fist? Where does it come and go? Uh, Wittgenstein would say this is a language game. Okay? The, the, the trick here is that there's no such thing as a fist. The fist is a configuration of the hand. But we get tricked into believing that a fist is a thing by language. So the same thing happens with the knower and the learner. The knower lives in a world of substance. The learner lives in a world of process. The knower is trying to convince everybody that he or she is right and other people are wrong, or whoever disagrees with her is wrong. And the learner is in the world of, I don't know, this is what I think, but I'd like to hear what you think. And I don't have a lot of investment in proving that someone is right and someone is wrong. We're just talking about things, and I don't, I don't have any side. I'm not even on my, there's no such thing as my side, because I don't have a side. 